Hi folks, today we'll be looking at Copilot and what we can do with it with Power Apps at this current point in time. Uh, it's a pretty large pro uh, product. Uh, Microsoft has Copilot in pretty much everything nowadays and it's always growing. So some of the things I'm showing you today are preview, but there's nothing stopping you from playing around with them uh, in your own environments. So what, what I'm looking to do here is really showcase how you can build an app from scratch without having to write any code whatsoever. Um, so by using things like natural language, we can ask questions or prompts. And the, the theory behind it is Copilot will take those prompts, interpret them and go away and build something for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is load up Power Apps, which we have here. If you go to make.powerapps.com, that'll get you into the, the Power Apps portal. And once you're in here, jump into an environment and you can start creating your apps. Here I've got an environment which is located in the um, UK region. So again, you may find that if you're signing in with, with different regions, you may have limited availability to certain features. Here, I'm going to go through and create an app. I can just go to the Home tab, and I can start going away and building whatever I want in here. I can ask a question. I can choose some pre-selected uh, questions. And ultimately, what that will do, that will take that in information. So the first thing I'll be doing is taking one of my prompts. So I'm going to be creating an app to manage expenses. I can go through, ping that through. And when I click the arrow, the first thing it's going to do is say, right, that's cool. I've, I've picked up that you're trying to do something. The first thing we may want to look at is, is actually how we're going to manage data. So since we start going through and creating the app, we can see that we have a table that's been created, our expenses management table. And from here, I can ask further questions to capture additional details. In my instance, I may want to capture a vendor for each of these expense lines. So what I can do is I'll take my next statement, pass that through into Copilot. And once that's processed, that'll go through and add a new column for us for vendor. One thing that I found is there are some limitations with this, such as if I wanted to create maybe a lookup to other tables, I haven't been able to get that working just yet. Um, so currently it's very much sort of plain text that we're looking to bring through. Once I have my table configured, I can go through and create my app. And it'll take the information from that initial prompt of creating an expenses app, and it will go through and actually create an app for us. Once the app pops through, it's very much the same perhaps designer that you would be familiar with if you've never, well, if, you, if, you've, if you've developed apps previously. For those that have never touched Power Apps, essentially, once you start going through and creating apps, you went to a bit into, into a almost like a studio designer where you can go through and make tweaks and changes such as updating colors or whatever else. Now, when it comes to Copilot, the, the premise is that you shouldn't need to know how to do all those things. You should be able to ask a question and it'll go through and do it for you. So what I'm going to do here is ask a simple question such as how can I change the header color? And I'll ping that through. Now it's worth mentioning that here is where we start making use of preview features. So if I go through and follow some of these statements, such as we want to go through and look at the settings, general, preview tab, and so on. If I go to my settings, I go into my general, and from here, there is no preview section. Um, actually, if you go through to update, you'll notice that the modern controls is now actually a new feature that you can then enable or disable. So you can definitely ask it questions on, I need to do something, how, how do I go about doing it? Um, but you might find that actually some of the responses which are generated are a little dated. Again, there are references that you can go through and access later on. So in this instance, the documentation which has been referenced hasn't been updated in line with the actual release map of the feature. Other things you can do, or I should say rather well, not do, there are some, some niggles with it. If I want to ask a question such as changing a form to be a single column, and what I mean by this if I go into my form here, so we have my, my, my form one, and if I then go through and look at editing that form, there's an option where I can change the columns from two to one. If I go through and ask a question such as change that form to be a single column, one thing I'm finding at the moment is it struggles to identify where those where that form is or what it's trying to target. So here we can see that change has been made yet yeah, there doesn't seem to be a change that's been made 
empty. If I undo that, nothing, nothing, nothing really happens. There's nothing stopping you though from going into there and changing that to be a one column form if you see fit. In areas where it can help, so where we're looking at things like text changes, here we're looking at maybe adding an underline to expense management. Rather than me having to find expense management, so here we've got the label, expanding the, the details out from the right hand side, trying to find the underline, there we've got the underline there. So there's maybe three or four clicks. I can go through, ask a question, and it'll go through, interpret that, and you can see that there's an underline that now comes into that text. So for some of the simple changes, such as making text bold, changing uh, font sizes, font colors, those type of things, the Copilot feature presently is really good at doing that. Where it does start to suffer is maybe, maybe some of the more complex areas, which again, typically will be those questions raised by more seasoned developers who will know how to do this manually anyway. Now, in some instances, you'll find that you're still gonna have to write code. And oftentimes when we have an app that's built like this, there's a load of stuff that's gone in the background, which you might be unfamiliar with because, well, um, you haven't built it. It's been done by AI. One such feature could be such as when a form is submitted and there's an on success uh, criteria. So here we have my form. If I go through and select that form. Once that's submitted, there are different actions that you can do off the back of it. So if I go through and look at the on success item, you can see that uh, there's a chunk of information on here. So update context, current item, edit mode, new mode, so on and so forth. For those that aren't familiar with app development or PowerFX or with, with, with uh, Canvas Power Apps, that might be something which is not familiar. You, you might, might be unsure what that actually means. There are options now in Copilot. We can go through, explain the formula. And you can see here, it's gonna say, right, we're gonna update some context variables, current item, edit mode, and new mode. And then we're gonna update it with some additional values respectively. Now there's still an element of the formula or the explanation doesn't understand maybe where edit modes used in the rest of the app or where new mode is used in the rest of the app, but at least it's giving you some details around those formulas that they, it is aware of in, in the context of where that search uh, arises. Now there are, again, like I said, other capabilities. Uh, there's a number of experimental elements which are in Canvas at the moment. It wouldn't surprise me if later on down the line, we might see some Copilot features here. I think the biggest changes which we'll see coming to Canvas apps will be this wider context as to how different controls interact with one another, but also how the different settings are gonna be exposed via Copilot to enable maybe more seasoned developers to actually start speeding up their workflow. But at this point in time, I think Copilot is really good for those who are just wanting to build something quick and easy, and maybe it's a stepping stone into taking a more hands-on development approach. For some of the seasoned developers, I think it's really good at setting up tables quickly and easily, rather than having to go through and play around with Dataverse and, and everything in, in between. If you start setting up things like preferred solutions and then going through and making use of the AI capabilities, you'll find that actually that part of your workflow is gonna be optimized. Obviously the next step with any of this, you'd go through save and publish and, and you're cooking on gas. But that's it for today's video. Short, simple, to the point, Copilot's here. It is doing a really good job. It's good at some things, not at others at the moment, but actually there's a load of stuff on the, on the pipeline and on the roadmap for it where we should see, again, a load of really cool and useful features and functionality.